Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Haiku PLC Investor Presentation for the full year results for the year ended 31st of December 2020. Throughout this presentation, investors are being in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and could be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and you'll be notified once they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Carlo Centonzo and Zava Hangartner of HiQ PLC. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome uh, to HiQ today and the presentation of uh, of our 2020 results. Uh, with me today is our group CFO Xaver. And before getting going, I wanted to run uh, one further quick poll with you just to see how many of you have already experienced HiQ technology on products, articles that they have purchased. Thanks for polling on that together uh, with us too. Super, then uh, uh, I remind you of the uh, disclaimer and I uh, start by getting going with uh, a IQ at, uh, at the glance. Uh, as a recap for you, uh, we were born in uh, 2005 and listed last year on the London Stock Exchange and we are uh, today a global, uh, diverse, 140 uh, men and women strong company. And uh, we are uh, uh, also today uh, an innovation powerhouse that uses six technology platforms and IP to create some of the most performing and sustainable technologies for our industry. Uh, we're also a company that um, differentiates by featuring very strong ingredient branding platforms and uh, innovation uh, from lab to consumers. And uh, we do this with uh, over 300 uh, leading brands uh, today. What we, um, what we do um, in our key uh, markets, in our purpose at HiQ, is uh, really to improve the life of billions by innovating materials that people use every day, and we do that sustainably. Uh, we do this by innovating in uh, functional ingredients, in functional materials, but also by creating directly functional finished goods ourselves. Uh, while we do this, we're offering turnkey solutions with our support services and we operate today in large growing markets such as the antimicrobial textiles, the textile chemicals, industrial filtration and also the newly acquired probiotic market thanks to our latest acquisition. We operate uh, on a proven uh, strategy and we innovate with it. Uh, what we do is we anticipate uh, future needs and uh, uh, these needs are brought by megatrends and create a novel uh, demand and uh, we inform this demand with our innovations. We do create new market segments, blue oceans, such as we did last year where we created the antiviral textile market category. And um, we win by creating technologies with uh, a very strong ESG benefit uh, for, for the consumers and we deliver them as end-to-end -end solutions from lab to consumer uh, to the market. A few examples, uh, IQ Smart Temp, our cooling technology, last year uh, in a pandemic year grew 16%. Um, our Haiku Fresh Air uh, platform uh, for air purification achieved 2 million sales with its first article uh, to market. And uh, uh, obviously Haiku Viroblock, which we launched in March last year, our antiviral technology, uh, reached uh, a stunning 14 million sales in its first year of uh, go-to-market. Uh, if you look at us today, uh, then uh, you can see us as having a, a balanced product portfolio with, with really exciting growth opportunities. Uh, we lead with high market share and high market growth with our uh, Haiku Fresh range, especially in air purification with our antimicrobials and with our Haiku uh, Smart Temp cooling range in the upper right quadrant. In our offer to the left, 
with high growth opportunities are our new businesses in symbiotic surface hygiene, uh, our clean tech, our medical devices, the Exaflex technology, uh, as well as the work in progress in our HiQ Graphenix uh, highly porous membrane technology platform. We keep transforming our product offer also in the lower two quadrants and we innovate to elevate them into the higher growth uh, markets as we have done historically from acquisitions conducted for example in 2017. If we have a quick look at uh, our uh, numbers uh, last year then uh, uh, organic growth at all levels what was, was what HiQ managed to achieve. Our revenues were up by 80%, uh, while our gross margins uh, improved in parallel by 700 basis points. The EBITDA reached 14 million, a plus of almost 400%, and almost 500% growth uh, was reflected in the earnings uh, per share. But equally important is uh, our brand equity grew significantly, and we had over 7,000 earned media mentions. Uh, which is a 280% growth and which immediately led us to monetize our strength and brand equity by signing seven new royalty bearing contracts. On the innovation side, we managed to prime the pump and we pushed in 12 new R&D projects into the pipeline and we had five coming out in 2020 and go to market and this in a very difficult market environment. So all this hard work done by the uh, HiQ, uh, HiQans around the world uh, has also resulted in a healthy appreciation of our share price since the listing. Now let's dive a little bit more into the detail and I hand over to Xaver to run you through our numbers. Xaver, your control. Thank you, Carlo. As mentioned by Carlo, we achieved a strong organic growth of over 80% which was coupled with an increase in our overall gross profit margin as well. Uh, the margin on gross profit level increased by 7% up to 55.6%. This growth was driven on the one hand by rapid innovation and the corresponding launch of HiQ Wireblock uh, one year ago, as well as a swift execution of a forward integration from functional ingredients into finished goods. On the other hand, it was backed by a growth of 16% of, other, of one of our other core products, the HiQ Smart Temp. And with this strong growth of two of our key technologies, HiQ Smart Temp and our antimicrobial range, including HiQ Wireblock, the product mix sold impacted was very favorably impacted and leading to the increase of the average gross margin. If we look at the full profit and loss statement, as mentioned, 50 million sales, 40 million EBITDA, and the net profit of 5 million, which is almost uh, plus 600% compared to the previous year. I'd like to mention that the APTA includes in our SGNA as also co significant costs for investments in new markets like the medical device and the consumer goods, which we basically uh, built up only last year. If we look at other operating income and expenses, um, it is to be mentioned that this is mainly driven by foreign exchange impacts. The same is true for our finance costs, which encompasses um, a large amount of, of foreign exchange impact. The bottom line profit of 5 million is um, after listing costs of in total 3.5, uh, 3.3 millions, which are um, expensed, as you can see in, in the profit and loss. If we look at our balance sheet, um, it's natural that after such a strong performance and uh, a listing with a capital raise of 20 million uh, pounds at the year end, we, we ended the, the year with a very strong balance sheet. 
Um, I'd like to highlight our net current assets of 43 millions, um, our net hash position of 24 millions, which means that we are uh, on a net basis debt free, and we have an equity ratio of 71%. Our inventory is increased significantly, though, which is backed by two. Uh, drivers. One thing is the increased business, which uh, required us to, to increase our inventories and uh, working capital in general. But on the other hand, we took the strategic decision to increase inventory levels as we saw significant instabilities in global supply chains uh, since, since a year ago, and this will also continue into this year. That's why we have uh, rather high inventories uh, as of the end of the year. The cash flow statement basically reflects our uh, our activities, the strong operating um, performance, the capital raise, and and also our investment activities. We have a strong operating cash flow before working capital investments to manage, uh, which were needed to manage the increased business and the global supply chain instabilities, as mentioned before. And yeah, we ended the year with a very strong cash position, which is allowing us to deploy that cash this year in various strategic growth initiatives. And with that, I hand back to Carlo to look into 2021 and ahead. Super, thank you, Xaver, for this uh, comprehensive growth overview in uh, 2020. And uh, growth is also what we are uh, after looking uh, ahead. If uh, uh, we um, uh, we look at 2020, then it's really a year that uh, that paved the way for growth for us. We we onboarded an unprecedented number of new uh, invoiced customers. Uh, we actually more than doubled the number, and uh, it took us uh, 15 years to get half of them, and then one year to get the second half of them. So we are right now uh, investing in scaling up our support systems, uh, our services, uh, in order to convert these customers fully and, and maximize the potential uh, with them. This will take us a couple of years because it is a, a very high la a very large number of new customers and a very big opportunity for us to cross sell all our technologies and make the most out of it. We also strongly expanded uh, our sales network uh, already last year before before we had the proceeds available. We invested in new sales hires and new distributors. Uh, and we also went to market with uh, direct to consumer channel, a web shop, which scored a million sales in its first couple of months as it was uh, actually up and uh, running. We did enter new market fields uh, of consumer goods, of medical devices and healthcare, and they are going to be a strategic base for us going forward to promote our technologies and our services. Uh, if you look at our strength and brand equity, uh, it was really a, a result of many, many media mentions more than the previous years. And we were already good in the previous years. So last year we were exceptionally good. And this really gave us a boost on brand equity. And it also led to have uh, 650 brands sign up with us for trademark license agreements. Of these 650, so far approximately 150 have gone already to market while the others are still working with us to do so in the near uh, future. If we if we look at uh, uh, the success 2020, uh, uh, we see that they are uh, continued in uh, in 2021. Our strategic focus this year is to further grow sales channels, uh, is to strengthen our innovation capabilities and our differentiation capabilities, and also to conduct uh, capability building uh, M and A's. Uh, we just announced this morning the acquisition of RAS in Germany, which is a materials innovation company that is adding to our antimicrobial sol solutions and coatings, but is also adding to our R&D capabilities uh, going forward. So concretely, uh, this, this year we are uh, uh, finalizing uh, what is a fully commercial entity in China, which is still our biggest potential market. And we're building up further in, in South Asia as uh, 
customers are switching to the regions, for example, of uh, Vietnam and also South Asia uh, in general. Uh, we will focus this year on uh, an upgrade to one of our key lifestyle ranges. Uh, we strongly focus on high fresh air purification technologies that we want to broaden out to market. And of course, our microbial management platforms uh, will we'll see us uh, bring to market uh, shortly uh, uh, more innovation, as will our uh, medical devices with high-tech surgical mask that we will shortly uh, launch. Our focus will this year be on regulatory matters, as well as digital uh, marketing. Uh, and uh, uh, shortly again, uh, we will conduct further uh, capability building uh, M&As. On uh, this mission, uh, we started strong in Q1 with sales in Q1 above Q4 and above Q1 in the previous year. We won uh, five new contracts in Q1. We entered four new markets and uh, uh, we acquired uh, Crisal uh, uh, in the first quarter and just now we acquired RAS in, uh, in Germany uh, as an innovative materials and coding platform which uh, uh, enables us also to enter transparent conductive uh, coatings and infrared shielding technologies, which will be important in, in the defense sector going forward. Uh, we did acquire the probiotic innovation platform in Q1 with Crisal, and uh, uh, we also managed in Q1 to launch the uh, first uh, uh, advanced filtration material to market which is uh, one of the innovations in our intermediary offer to the market. But if we look um, specifically at uh, the acquisition from Q1 in, uh, in industrial biotech, uh, then uh, we definitely have a highlight there. Uh, after knowing Crisal for, uh, for many years, we, we finally could convince them that uh, teaming up would be of mutual benefit to bring their amazing technologies uh, uh, to market together more forcefully. And if you look at Crisal, it's a company that has 120 products and serves today uh, more than 500 customers in, in more than 20 uh, countries worldwide. And they achieved a really good growth last year with 60% uh, of uh, organic uh, growth. And beside the home care, personal care and uh, water treatment, Crisal is serving the healthcare industry and currently delivers its uh, symbiotic technology uh, hospital cleaner to over 40 hospitals uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, HiQ has 200 hospitals that we know, so there's a nice uh, synergy going forward to uh, bring this tech into our channel. The acquisition offers um, strong growth opportunities as we bring their technology also into our more textile related markets. And on our side, our uh, marketing uh, excellence and branding excellence will benefit their product lines to make the most out of it in direct-to-consumer uh, sales. Uh, the acquisition also gives us a manufacturing capability for what are consumer goods, and they enable our long-planned uh, mm -hmm. textile aftercare product range to go to market uh, smoothly later in this, uh, in this year. Most of the um, uh, acquisition uh, most of all, this acquisition really opens up for us uh, uh, an immediate double-digit uh, uh, opportunity thanks to, of, of growth, thanks to the next generation microbial uh, management solution for the healthcare industry that Crisal has uh, uh, created over the last years. And this is um, also where I move uh, quickly into uh, uh, the uh, substantial growth opportunities that we have in front of us. And I start with the one uh, uh, that I just touched, healthcare surface hygiene. There uh, is a big problem today with multi-resistant bacteria. I'm sure you all have heard of the golden stuff, the MRSA. Uh, today we also have uh, the viruses that are making life tougher for hospitals, but there's an underlying problem and uh, hospital acquired infections are here to stay unfortunately uh, as uh, comes out from a study uh, commissioned by the british prime minister uh, by 2050 we are to expect 10 million deaths per year and and 100 um, and 100 uh, uh, trillion negative gdp 
by 2050 uh, due to hospital-acquired infections. And as antibiotics are failing and are lacking innovation, there is none inside, it will come down to enhanced surface protection and cleaning technologies to stem the tide. And this is where uh, HiQ Crisal uh, Symbio Hospital Cleaner has demonstrated a 70 to 80 percent infection reduction in a clinical study at leading Italian hospitals. So this is uh, uh, one of our biggest uh, market opportunities this year. And uh, we, we do uh, really focus on uh, making better microbial management for the uh, healthcare industry one of our uh, priorities. There is uh, substantial growth also immediately accessible to us in the air purification. If you look at uh, metropolitan uh, cities, then uh, more than half of world world population is living in cities already. Uh, the air is pretty bad. The indoor air is uh, uh, really bad too. So there's over three and a half million deaths per year, as uh, uh, WHO is telling us, due to bad indoor air quality. And um, we we can with uh, with the high fresh air technology really make a difference. It has been market tested. Uh, it has gone to market. Uh, the exclusivity has uh, lapsed and we are going to broaden this year our um, our technology to multiple brands and uh, and retailers. But if we look a bit more forward uh, where, uh, where some disruptive growth uh, can be, then our uh, highly porous graphene membrane technology, Graphenix, will ena enable us to access further large markets. Batteries are in high demand as we are switching and decarbonizing and we are working on the fifth generation of batteries addressing the current uh, weaknesses of fast uh, uh, recharge and extended reach. And uh, we have a uh, very good IP position thanks to the Graphene tech platform that we intend to bring forward uh, in the coming years. Uh, but also clean uh, uh, water uh, is uh, is a bit the new gold uh, with global warming uh, and uh, and critical water supply, clean water supply. Uh, desalinization will become a critical technology going forward, and with our uh, highly porous membrane, we will be able to give the desalinization plants much more efficiency uh, or by orders of magnitude cheaper uh, uh, manufacturing of clean water uh, wherever these desalinization plants are locally then manufacturing. So as you can see, we're not short of um, tech innovations and, uh, and aspirations. And uh, we are uh, uh, really eager uh, to, to reach uh, new heights and uh, to do that together with you. And if I summarize in a nutshell, then uh, uh, we have a very strong uh, financial base uh, at HiQ. We have... Um, demonstrated uh, our ability uh, to grow a high margin business in uh, in high growth markets uh, and uh, to achieve a healthy organic growth uh, in, in revenues, but also in very important brand equity. And uh, as an innovation powerhouse with, uh, with multiple technology platforms and strong IP and also a unique innovation network and, and the full pipeline uh, we are really well placed for uh, for future growth, and uh, we have at hand today a few uh, immediate growth opportunities in microbial management. Uh, pandemic is here; the problem is here. Uh, we have solutions, and we intend to bring them to market forcefully. Uh, but also, air purification is an imminent uh, opportunity that we are pushing forward. While we are there, also for um, pressing global demands and future demands for clean water and uh, and, and better uh, batteries. Uh, with that, I thank you very much for your attention and uh, I do open up for the Q&A. Carlo Zella, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard on the Investor Meet Company platform. 
I'd also like to remind you that your feedback is important to the company and immediately after the presentation has ended, you'll be redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Carlos, obviously investors have submitted a number of questions during the presentation today. Um, if I um, could hand back to you just to respond to those where appropriate to do so, may I ask you just to read out the question and give your response? That'd be great. Thank you. Sure, we'll do that. So uh, I'll take uh, I'll take the first one from John. Uh, what does the company look like in uh, in five years time? Revenue, product, service mix, etc. So we're we're clear, clearly growing a company to have multiple tech platforms and multiple uh, products that can serve uh, multiple markets. But we are um, uh, very keen to group our product offer into a very clear understanding for a specific problem. Uh, take microbial management in, in hospitals, uh, multi-resistance hospital-acquired infections. That's really a problem we want to tackle. Uh, by a combination of products, uh, of services, uh, and, uh, and of knowledge that we are uh, transferring. So there, there is opportunity for us to grow also on, um, on these other fields of, uh, of licenses, of, uh, of royalties, uh, and of services that we are coupling with the solutions that we bring to market. Uh, where this is going to lead, we, we will always be a material innovation company but we do intend to bring to market turnkey solutions that can capture additional uh, revenue streams by complementing the original uh, innovation that we have created. Um, I take the next question from Andy. Uh, more details on, uh, on the recent acquisition and how we integrate into the group and leverage the additional capabilities. So now we had uh, three acquisitions uh, in December, in, uh, in March, and, uh, and now in April. And uh, while the first one in medical devices is integrated by now, uh, the other two are still uh, work in process. Uh, and the integration that uh, that we do at HiQ is a gross integration. So we try to find the uh, mutual synergies. And it's also a uh, an integration that happens in a business model that HiQ has been running, which you can call uh, one of, uh, uh, of, of a uh, global network and global uh, teamwork where we uh, have a, um, a matrix organization that is working together in the different disciplines in HiQ across, uh, across the regions. If um, we take the, uh, the next question here, that one will be for you, Xaver, on uh, uh, say something about our trade receivables, uh, three months worth of, uh, of receivables, sounds high. Is there a problem in, uh, in getting paid? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, no, we do not have a problem in getting paid. Um, three months worth of receivable sounds high. Yes, but you have to consider we are a global company. A lot of our customers and also a lot of revenue comes from Asia. And we see, typically we see from the west to the east increasing uh, payment terms we have with our customers in the in the us we have uh, rather short payment terms uh, in, in europe it's it's um, uh, it's it's normally uh, 30 to 60 days in if you go more into italy but in asia we uh, you typically find longer payment terms of three months or even some Customers we know for a long time, and where we have um, a long-term business relationships, we also um, have four months in selected cases. So, on average, the three months is uh, is is reflecting where we are active, and at the year end, um, it's also. Uh, a question of, of the timing of the receivables. We see that at year end we had some larger positions in um, which have been collected after the year end. So in general, I, I think we have a, 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 a we have a, a good management of our receivables and uh, for sure no no material issues. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Xaver. Then uh, I'll, uh, I'll take the next question from Tim. Uh, can you match 2020's organic growth in, uh, in 2021? Uh, we're working on it. 
um, do you anticipate a product mix in 2021 being favorable or unfavorable to the gross margin? Uh, we, we do still see a, a strong demand for our innovation technologies this year. So this would rather uh, tip into uh, favorable or maintained. Uh, do you anticipate inventories being uh, higher or lower at the end of 2021 than at the end of 2020? Well, we, we, we remain very prudent on the inventory side. I mean, uh, there's, there's nothing worse than being out of stock to supply your customers. That's the entry gate for your competition. So we have this strategic decision to be rather on the safe side of inventories in times where the global supply chains are very, very, very shaky. And the uh, global supply of, uh, of base chemicals has suffered tremendously from the Texas freezes. So this prudential approach, if we if we keep our growth could lead us to keep the policy in place that we have right now uh, if anything we would uh, we would try to lower it a little bit by having uh, a more local uh, manufacturing uh, which allows us to to have shorter delivery times and uh, that would reflect in uh, in less inventory that we need to carry uh, do we anticipate a working capital inflow or outflow in 2021 Xavier, i left let that one for you Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean the the receivables we expect on a on a similar similar level, um, uh, including as after the anticipated growth and inventories, as mentioned by Carla, will also uh, stay on on a on a similar level, and uh, and and therefore, um, it, it's I mean it's hard to predict with the, all the time, but in general we see the working capital on on a similar level as of the year end, and and with a tendency to rather an inflow than an outflow. Super, I take the next question from David. How much concentration by customer is there within uh, our annual revenue? Um, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that all our customers are uh, below the 10% uh, uh, mark. We do have a few big ones that uh, are between this five and 10%, uh, but uh, overall it's a very diverse uh, uh, range of customers uh, where we have many that are in the uh, medium field now, and uh, it's a very good balance that we have uh, uh, stricken there. Uh, I take the next question also from David, how much of your revenue is recurring? Most of our revenue is recurring. Uh, typically, we, we enter a customer with one tech. Uh, we are successful together. Uh, we then bring uh, more techs that we already have uh, to, to play with him. And then we bring the R&D services uh, inside and we say, hey, what's the next tech that you want to have? So organic growth within the customer is really our, uh, is our key success over the last uh, uh, years. Uh, there is very, very few customers where we, where we play hard uh, that we ever lost uh, to competition. If we did, we, kept, we caught them back quite quickly. Um, take the next question from Graham. Uh, how are we progressing with the Graphenix pilot plant? Well, that's, uh, that's an exciting uh, um, tech and project. So I'm happy to tell you that we have uh, uh, onboarded the first core team of, uh, of four people that are uh, executing diligently uh, this, uh, this scale-up uh, design and this scale-up uh, plan. Uh, and we are at the same time expanding our IP. You saw that with the batteries. Uh, we're also expanding uh, our network for joint development agreements with uh, with key market players in the different fields where this tech will be able to play a, a big role uh, this year. So work in progress. We have a great team in place. And uh, uh, this year, uh, we really hope to make big strides forward uh, to the towards the commercialization of our tech. Next question of uh, John. If we need to raise funds, hypothetically speaking, to help accelerate growth, will you make sure that individual shareholders will be able to participate in any equity raise and will not be diluted from purely an institutional raise? Absolutely. Uh, we, we, we do stick to that, uh, uh, John, and uh, we, we have a good, uh, a good reserve of cash right now, so it's not in the immediate uh, uh, future. There might be opportunities in future that uh, make us come back to the capital market to levy funds, but then we would do that uh, for all our shareholders. Um, 
Ketan, how are mask sales in 2021 in comparison to 2020? Do you still expect them to be stronger? So we have uh, two types of mask. We have the uh, uh, community masks, uh, which are the washable ones, uh, which last year were last year were less than five percent of our sales. And uh, we do see, since the regulations, especially in Germany, restricted the use to uh, surgical masks for the greater public with FFP2s, we saw a decline in the sales of such uh, consumer masks. On the other side, we saw uh, an increase in sales globally on the more professional masks. We could uh, we could deliver that um, request that came in. Uh, what our plan in the uh, mask field is, is to innovate them. And uh, very shortly from now, uh, we will bring to the market a few really good innovations in, in high-tech medical uh, masks. And we do plan to franchise them out. So there's going to be movement also on the uh, uh, revenue generation by royalties, by franchisees uh, that we are uh, planning to roll out in the uh, second half of the year. Uh, next question by Michael, uh, given your fast growth, what are the challenges that you foresee to enable you to scale up operations? And what do you see the biggest risk to achieve that? Well, Michael, it's always the right people in the right place and uh, enough time to uh, uh, to make uh, things happen properly. And uh, yes, it is, uh, it is certainly a, a stretch, but that's always a stretch uh, when you are uh, growing. So we're diligently uh, using the proceeds uh, as we had promised at uh, at listing to to build up and uh, and materialize this growth on all the dimensionalities that are required to be successful uh, long term. If we uh, go to the next question from Mohit, uh, can you break down the eighty percent revenue growth between organic and acquisition? Uh, I can. Uh, Twenty twenty was all organic. Uh, acquisitions only start to uh, play uh, in uh, in 2021. And then we have from Ed, are your royalty contracts measured along productivity gains in the added benefit of your products or purely on volume sold? No, we really have a, a mixed scheme uh, there. We, we use different royalty models, but uh, uh, some of the more successful ones are on, uh, on value added. So we are capturing a large part of the value added at the end with our uh, brand uh, uh, partner that uses and features our ingredient brand. So this is one of our strategies and we are resourcing uh, diligently this uh, royalty um, uh, part of our business uh, with uh, experienced operatives that have joined us just, uh, just recently. So more to come. Uh, the question from Michael, can you um, expand on uh, your growth plans uh, and expectations for Heike Vidoblock? Well, the first quarter saw us um, expand the Vidoblock into paints, into coatings, into laundry, uh, into gyms. And, uh, and these are very diverse markets and industries. And this is also the key of this year. We are trying to spearhead with our iconic tech into new markets, into uh, into new fields, and then also to open the door for all our other uh, technologies or technology platforms to to create uh, innovation uh, in those fields. So so far, very successful um, uh, trust forward in uh, in opening up uh, uh, the Asian fields where we haven't been uh, playing before. And Vitalblock is really uh, our best door opener uh, ever. Another question from Mohit. The gross margin has significantly increased over the year. What's the driver? It's it's mainly product mix uh, moving towards the uh, uh, specialities that we have in our uh, in our product range. And that's also the long term thrust that we are pushing forward. Ideally, we want to move uh, towards a uh, sixty percent gross uh, margin across all our product segments uh, going going forward. Question from Steven, how much uh, of your revenues rely on subcontractor production? As you expand geographically, does this present particular pro problems? How do you see CapEx and R&D costs progressing? I'm very happy to tell you that we are a very proud manufacturing company with uh, seven manufacturing plants and uh, less than 10% today is uh, subcontracted for, for our production. Um, we are... Um, um, 
we are expanding geographically with two focus areas clearly asia uh, southeast asia and south asia are our two first hotspots central america is our uh, third one and uh, no we do not see problems uh, with that uh, we are uh, experienced in in being a, a nas international company and uh, it works quite well in uh, in onboarding new high qns in these different uh, regions how do you see capex and r d costs progressing well we are uh, on the capex still very light uh, there's not much capex we need to spend uh, we have capabilities and capacities yes we're building some new labs uh, on the r d side we're more generous uh, with our uh, with our expenditures uh, we really want to be and stay an innovation company and uh, overall this year uh, we have released a little bit the handbrake uh, Haikyuu has always been a growth company but also a company looking at profitability and numbers and we understand the momentum is uh, is good uh, we understand the opportunity is big uh, so this year we have uh, pushed a bit more on the accelerator but we will always uh, keep this balance between uh, profitability and uh, uh, growth going forward question from john uh, appreciate your uh, focus on growth and scaling the company the medium long term do you anticipate to start uh, paying dividends absolutely if the board decides so uh, we will we will do that uh, right now is a really good time to, to to take a lot of land with our tech platforms and we're very focused in uh, in doing that uh, organically but also by acquisitions and uh, uh, to create a very strong uh, uh, company with a very strong uh, uh, technology and innovation offer and brand offer to the market going forward question from william could you explain a little how graphene works in desalinization and its impact on the economics please that's a very techy question i'll take it in, in 30 seconds uh, it's uh, the flux uh, graphene is a super thin material has a very uh, big separation potential you can uh, steer the porosity of it very good it's very robust so it doesn't break and this allows us to uh, reduce the dimension that uh, salt water has to travel in order to uh, become sweet on the other side you can think of it it's a very short tunnel that you have to pass through graphene while the other one is the uh, channel between britain and uh, and france uh, with, uh, uh, with with a long a long transition time and for us it's just more like a traffic light stop that's how thin the graphene is and that's why we can have much better economics because it's so much faster simon uh, how much price power do your products have well we have uh, the best price power in the industry because we uh, run an innovative business model where we uh, get specified by our brand partners so the price elasticity for us is uh, is, is is not a big uh, concern and uh, we have uh, value creation and added value that we can justify hence uh, we have a relatively within limits of course of the market uh, we have a relatively good uh, uh, price positioning that we can run question from oliver uh, what percent of sales is on a project basis uh, as opposed to a, a product basis uh, if most revenue is uh, recurring should inventory levels be a, uh, a lot lower well most of it is on a not on a project basis but it's really on a product basis that's most of our business i would say the project business uh, is, is less than 10 percent uh, historically and uh, uh, inventories as mentioned this you saw the suez canal uh, that uh, created terrible havoc on our customer levels uh, just for one week that it was blocked uh, because it added up on california it added up on uh, on texas freezes so the the supply chain are really distressed and um, it just takes uh, a, a, the, the, the classical bat butterfly wing uh, to to make it break down and it's very hard to justify to your customer you can't serve them uh, especially in these times when everybody has a thin skin so we do prefer on the inventory to uh, have a bit more luxury uh this uh this last year but also this year uh john could you tell us a little more about the healthcare product you mentioned to tackle bacterial resistance uh is a spray coating uv light or other how far along are you with talking to uh, other healthcare services like the nhs 
we have very good contact with the NHS uh, since the beginning of the of the pandemics, uh, with uh, with some of our partners that are daily talking to them. Uh, the solution that we are bringing to the healthcare will be surface coatings, will be cleaners, will be uh, antiviral detergents for the hospital laundry, uh, will be medical gowns that are antiviral, will be medical devices like face masks, like gloves, etc. So we are really thinking of a holistic approach and a, a total solution provider in order to tackle uh, uh, infections uh, from bacteria, but also uh, from viruses and contribute to a lowered hospital acquired infection rate, thereby a much lowered cost for the hospitals, but also for society as every uh, death in, in our Western nations is estimated to cost society uh, 3 million pounds. Um, we move to the next one. Bill, does uh, Dr. Murray Hyde, your co-founder, continue to work full-time for the company and where is he based? No, he's not working full-time. He's probably working double shifts like everybody at HiQ. And yes, he is uh, fully committed and uh, is heading HiQ Australia. He's based in Geelong. HiQ Australia is on campus in Deakin University. Uh, we finance more than a dozen PhDs there on uh, uh, on really breakthrough innovation that we are spearheading. And Murray is, as Chief Science Officer, leading all the global R&D in HiQ. So all the seven R&D hubs are reporting uh, to him uh, uh, on a strategic uh, R&D innovation strategy. Are IKEA still in the from Keaton? In increasing their range of curtains with HiQ from the initial pilot of one, uh, has there been a good feedback? Uh, we we have we see that IKEA has been uh, selling uh, uh, on in a standalone way, so we were unfortunately not involved in the commercialization. The good thing for us is uh, the exclusivity is uh, is expired, and uh, we have the opportunity to now approach many other retailers that have uh, uh, waited uh, until we had the opportunity to go to market now. Uh, with them so you should be seeing uh, several other retailers uh, promoting the offer to consumers uh, still in this year and the last question i see here from peter uh, being an uh, international koi how do you handle the koi's currency risk exposure do you invoice in local currency of each country uh, you are uh, selling to or do the customers absorb the risk uh, so peter it's um it's it's a mixed bag there, and uh, and, and forex ra risks are are still something we are uh, learning to manage better, uh, with increasing uh, volumes in uh, in the different markets. Uh, yes, we we do invoice in local currencies. We invoice in euros. We invoice in U.S. dollars, but we also invoice in uh, renminbi's uh, or Taiwanese dollars. Um, so we are um, trying to optimize. Uh, the forex uh, uh, hedging and uh, structuring. Uh, we try to do that mostly by natural hedging, by having also costs in the different uh, locations where we have the uh, local currencies so that we have a natural hedge to uh, to it. Um, not a question here. Do we have any Fortune 500 customers? Uh, do we work with uh, brands like Nike, Walmart, uh, etc.? Yes, we have we have many Fortune 500 customers. That's uh, that's a specialty of of HiQ to team up with with the multi-billion biggies and to innovate with them. I'm, I'm not saying that's always easy and that's always fast, uh, but take the Gap Group. I'm sure you guys are familiar with with Gap or Atleta or uh, Banana Republic or Old Navy that are their brands. That's a, a 10 billion plus uh, a company. Uh, where we brought our uh, antimicrobial free odor control technology in a year ago and it's now broadening from the first adopting brand to all the others so this is really one of our expertises to work with large uh, fortune 500 uh, uh, companies um, another question here when and what is uh, our next product launch well we are uh, we are preparing to launch a um, high-tech uh, medical device masks very very shortly we're talking really uh, uh, weeks uh, and this will be uh, an exciting uh, new mask with uh, with new uh, antiviral features 
uh, that gives uh, uh, much better uh, comfort uh, and uh, and safety and protection, uh, but also much better look uh, to to consumers who will uh, who will wear it. Um, and yes, there's plenty of of launches in the pipeline from a, from an ingredient uh, point of view. Uh, so this year is going to be an interesting year on the product innovation uh, side too. Uh, Keaton, what do you believe in the one killer application of HiQ to get you to your 300 million revenue target? Well, Keaton, uh, Crisal, which we acquired, sells to 40 hospitals. They're uh, clinical study proven a hospital cleaner. Uh, they make good money with it. We have 200 hospitals we have immediately available, so we need to move it into those channels. Uh, if we do so, we go double digit. Uh, there's 7,000 hospitals in uh, in Europe. Uh, if we approach them with a solution that has proven data to reduce the hospital-acquired infection by 70 to 80 uh, percent, we can probably convert a large part of them, which is triple triple digit million sales for, for HiQ. And if you expand this one product, this one field uh, globally to 50,000 hospitals, you can make your mass. Uh, one product can probably uh, already cover for our current market cap uh, that, that we have. Uh, but this said, it's not an easy field. Uh, hospitals and healthcare are difficult. So we'll, we'll, we'll go diligently at it and, and build a competent uh, team to execute on it. Um, we just released, uh, yeah, we we just released another RNS this morning. Uh, this is uh, this is a company that is uh, active in uh, functional materials. It's a company uh, that creates uh, ingredients uh, in the nano size, in the micro size, in the macro size. Uh, it's a company that creates uh, uh, coating systems. And uh, that's one of the main uh, reasons, uh, also from a product range, why we are uh, why we were very interested to bring them on board. Um, we we are new to the world of durable coatings for surfaces. Uh, this company has a, a very good product range, into which we can integrate our other ingredients and functionalities. Especially if we look at the hospital again, uh, self uh, disinfecting. Surfaces uh, are uh, are going to be in big demand on metal, on plastic, uh, on glass, and uh, and this is where this company has a very good uh, uh, product range that we can uh, that we can bring to market quickly. But they also have uh, a a, um, a conductive, uh, a transparent conductive film technology, and uh, that is uh, for touch screens uh, a big market. Uh, but it's also an infrared reflection which for our army customers uh, in the defense sector on textiles will be uh, a very interesting proposition to, to bring to market as it will be very interesting for smart textiles um, uh, with functionality, uh, electronic functionality going forward. Uh, one more question here from Bill. Uh, you said that you have seven manufacturing plants and seven R&D hubs, uh, surely a case could be made for a slimmer and more streamlined structure given the small size of the company. Well, uh, that's uh, a bit uh, contrary to our view. We deem to be in region with boots on the grounds is one of the main reasons why we have won so much last year because we could deliver. Uh, we were there, we had the local teams. Uh, we can reflect the innovation to market quickly. Uh, keep in mind that uh, all our customers are uh, just in time uh, in asking your technologies, uh, no forecasts given whatsoever. So it's a very difficult industry and our strategy reflects uh, this, uh, this industry in which we play by, uh, by being present. And um, on the R&D side, uh, we, we do build and very frequently we are uh, on campus uh, R&D hubs uh, next to universities. And this gives us access to talents, to brains, to tools, uh, to fundamental knowledge before it gets published, before it gets patented, and is part of our successful uh, innovation engine and, uh, and motor. And uh, the company is built to, um, to work like that as a network organization uh, across the globe. And 
hand over the tasks uh, uh, around the clock. So it's a 24, sometimes seven uh, operations that we can uh, that we can run. And one more question here: Can you tell us a bit more about uh, your plan to expand in Asia? Well, China is uh, <clears throat> is the biggest market for us potentially. We by now have a dozen Haikuans that are uh, stemming the tide of demand there. We have much more opportunity. Uh, we built a very strong name also with government entities and hospitals last year. And we do intend to broaden our presence and our offer uh, in China with the high functionality technologies, but also by engaging with, uh, with Chinese-based uh, uh, researchers uh, where we are very close with our location to the uh, leading Chinese universities in Shanghai. Um, South Asia is another uh, region. Uh, a lot of uh, the market has moved to Vietnam. Uh, we are strengthening our presence in Vietnam as we speak. Uh, the same applies for South Asia, where out of Sri Lanka we are uh, serving uh, India, Bangladesh, and, uh, and Pakistan, as well as uh, uh, other regions uh, around it. Um, is there any uh, analyst note that we can access, have access to? Yes, there is, uh, published from uh, Senkos. So please uh, go on the uh, uh, Senkos website and uh, you will be able to access the uh, report uh, there. And um, the last question here, uh, does the queen really wear uh, high viral VirobLock gloves? Uh, yes, she does, as, as does Kate, uh, and uh, uh, we're very proud to be uh, uh, protecting her and uh, we're very proud to work with Cornelia James, which is the glove maker for the queen uh, and, uh, and her brand. And uh, we uh, uh, really are uh, uh, happy to be able, in general, in these pandemic times, to be able to contribute with our technologies to safer surfaces and to enhance protection and uh, uh, to enhance the uh, safety for uh, everybody that is using uh, high based technologies. Carlo so, Zeva, thank you very much for such an extensive Q. You can have a breather, Carlo, thank you. Fine, um, thank for you. such an extensive Q&A session, you've answered every single question that's posted, so it's so very kind of your time. Um, just on that, Carlo, before we redirect investors to give you some feedback, if there are any final words, just to wrap up, please, and we'll get them directed for you. Sure. Um, I think I can I can wrap up with, uh, with with saying that we are an interesting investment case. We uh, we see we see ourselves as a company that can uh, make science, so we can create innovation. We we innovate uh, with manifold uh, uh, platforms, and uh, and we're able to pull these uh, these platforms into products, and uh, and and we are. Uh, good branders, we can position them to consumers. Increasingly, we're building out our consumer channel. Uh, we really want our, our, our ingredient brands to become top of the mind brands uh, going forward. So uh, a good investment case because we operate uh, in a market where there is need. And, uh, and what we do most is we make science simple uh, for consumers and we make it simple uh, to go to market. And with that, I thank you all and I thank all uh, investors in HiQ and I look forward to reach reaching new heights together with you in the future. Fantastic. Carlos, thank you again for updating investors today and for such a yeah, extensive Q&A session. I'm sure it's well appreciated by the attendees. Can I please ask investors not to close the session as you will be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback. If you've accessed the meeting from our website, the feedback page will appear in front of you. If you've accessed the meeting via the link sent to you uh, in an email, you're simply asked to log back in. It takes just a couple of uh, seconds and it would be greatly appreciated by the team. On behalf of the management team of HiQ PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. Thank you and good afternoon. Bye bye, everybody.